Good evening. Hope everybody's had a very blessed week so far and enjoying the pretty weather that we've had today. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, temperature's comfortable and all that. Had a little bit of hard rain yesterday, but praise God. Today, we're going to go into part 11 of God's plan for you. We're still in Ephesians in chapter 3. And Ephesians, to me, is one of the most powerful teachings when it's broke down just a few verses at a time. Because it really is sort of like St. John. When you read St. John, he gives you an understanding of who you are, what you have in and through Christ Jesus. And, and that is the purpose of the Word, is to help us to come into relationship with God. Not just know about God, but have a relationship with God. So that uh, we can apply His Word by faith in our life. And once we do that, we can't help but to win. So, if you've got your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to start with verse 9 and read through verse 12 today and uh, sort of break it down a little bit. In verse 9 of Ephesians chapter 3, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Uh, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Hold on just a second. All right, little girl. Easy likes to come in and sit behind the copier until I get started, and then once I get started, she's ready to go out. So, let's get back to where we were in Ephesians 3. Now, I read all the, all the verses that we're going to look at tonight, and uh, when you, and of course, a lot of this is repetitive. Because he, Paul was trying to get the people to understand that before Jesus Christ was crucified, we were under the the world, the humanity was under the dominion of Satan. Uh, he had the authority over them to an extent and everything. And uh, that's why in verse 9, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Well, we know that Jesus Christ created, was part in the creation of heaven and earth and in mankind. And uh, while men have tried to figure God out, God doesn't know what he was going to do. He knew that before heaven and earth, before the first human being, before Adam was ever created, Jesus, the Son of God, and the Father, they didn't had a plan. They knew uh, that Satan, uh, because of iniquity was found in him, sin was found in him, and he wanted to be overrule God, was cast down. And that was really after the heavens and the earth was in creation or had done being created. Now, God through prophecy gave little bits or tips uh, of something that would take place in the future. Yet they could not understand. You know, you remember Jesus tried to teach about him being resurrected, him uh, going to pay the price and all that. And the disciples could not 
comprehend it. They couldn't understand it. You remember when Lazarus was sick and died, well, actually died at this point in time, and Martha uh, ran to him again, and Jesus said, uh, you know that he's going to live. And she said, yeah, I know the end last day. And, he, and Jesus said, well, I am the resurrection. And uh, uh, even when they crucified Jesus, and you go back in the book of Acts and you'll find that it says, and if they had known, they would not have crucified him. Why? Because when they crucified Jesus, he completed the work of breaking the barriers of sin, taking back over the authority, not only of heaven and earth, but given humanity the also the authority, those that receive him, excuse me. And uh, See, Jesus, he's the architect of heaven and earth anyway, and all of humanity. Now, uh, verse 10, uh, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. This verse really should make every Christian excited because God doesn't come down and tell the devil how smart he is. He shows the devil how smart he is through the church, and we are the church. You and me, if you're born again, you're part of the church. And that's why we have to understand by faith when we read the Word of God, We've been given authority because of what Jesus has done. You know, God had a plan before ages ever started. And after the fall of Lucifer, uh, when evil was found in heaven and earth, God had a plan which uh, was hidden in himself for a day to come when every believer would be able to show on earth the manifold wisdom of God. And, uh, uh, you know, that's why when Jesus rose from the dead, when he rose from the grave and ascended to heaven, he literally gave the authority over Satan and the fallen demons back to the people, the church. And that's why, you know, uh, they, you know, the Bible tells us that we're the body of Christ and his speed is over on all principalities and powers. He's over, uh, he, he crushes the head of Satan. And the only way that we can let Satan get on our back is to roll Late, get down to his level because he's under the feet of Jesus. And that's why when we understand who we are, what we have in and through Jesus Christ, then the devil in hell is stopped, literally, because they have no authority over us. And uh, we have to, uh, because when we use the authority God has given us, God is glorified and the devil is humiliated. And that is what God has uh, wanted from the very beginning for us to walk in the fullness. And that's why Ephesians is, is feeding you the word little by little to help you understand that you're not under the rule of Satan anymore. You're under the rule of God. And God's rule is higher than any other rule. You know, uh, uh, when you look at it, we are inferior creatures. Uh, 
to the angels. I mean, the angels, they traveled back and forth to the throne room of God. And, of course, you had to, a third of, of the angels were kicked out of heaven with Satan. And, uh, and here God takes a frail earthen vessel known as man or woman, boy, girl, no matter of what age, and through his word that gives us wisdom and knowledge, then we can just make the devil tremble. Uh, you go in the book of Acts and you'll find that uh, they was some brothers uh, thought that they would uh, uh, perform exorcism and uh, but they weren't born again and when they come across demonic spirit uh, the spirit looked at the demonic spirit in that man looked at him and said Paul we know Jesus we know but who are you and they and uh, that them demons uh, pretty much just stripped them men down and ran them down the street uh, naked, you know. Uh, why? Because they didn't have the spirit of the Lord inside of them. That's why you got to recognize that you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. It is that power, that dynamite, that dumas. And if you can grasp that, no matter what type of day you're having, you're going to go through it and you're going to come out all right. Uh, you know, if you look at it from God's viewpoint, God is probably laughing at Satan when Satan starts trying to attack his church because if his church is walking with the full armor on, they're going to make that devil flee. They'll make the demons tremble. And, uh, uh, you know, that's why we may be inferior creatures, but by the new birth, we're put in a, a superior position. We're seated in heavenly places. That's why we have to grasp that, you know. No longer am I that weak, frail earthen vessel, but I have taken on the Spirit of God inside of me that is the same Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave. And uh, so, you know, what is humiliating to Satan is to be stopped through the authority of us inferior creatures. I mean, look at Mark chapter 16. I'll read uh, verses 17 and 18 to you. Mark 16. And it's red letter. Well, We'll get verse 15 to. And he said unto them, Jesus is speaking, Go you into all the world and preach the uh, gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, whose name? Jesus' name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And, uh, and let's go ahead and give verse 19, 20. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And they went forth, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them 
confirm the word with signs following. Amen. And amen, and amen means so be it. So what happens is, is when you get born again, you're filled with the potential or with the Holy Spirit. But you have to learn by faith how to operate in the Spirit. It's just like praying in tongues. Does everybody, is everybody going to? No. Is everybody have to to get in heaven? No. Being born again is number one. Being baptized is uh, the confirmation that you believe that you are that new creature and all your sins have been washed away. Then you've got to build that relationship with the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. And see, that is the good thing about the mystery being made known to us. We know that no longer are we by ourselves, but we have what Jesus had in him. And Jesus did mighty works. And he said, greater works shall you do because I go be with the Father. In other words, he's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession that we not only overcome, but we are super victorious. That's why Paul was taught this, and he knew that people needed to understand who they are and what they have in Christ Jesus. People say, well, it might work for some, but it don't work for everyone well God's not a respecter of persons so if it's not working for everyone then maybe they don't have the understanding or the knowledge Lord knows I'm ha I still learning things and about time I think I got something down pat God goes and shows me a, another viewpoint of it and so it's a never-ending cycle of learning and learning and learning and you keep learning you never quit learning and the moment you quit learning is the moment you quit fulfilling the calling of God in your life and of course verse 11 according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in other words God the Father and Jesus the Son uh, they planned redemption of mankind before the foundation of the world. See, we can't, just, our minds just can't comprehend that because we think, well, then why did he do that? Why did he make mankind knowing that they were going to fail and et cetera, et cetera? God is a creator. And like all creators, I mean, you, you take, uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Branson or Elon Musk or uh, all these people, scientists, inventors and everything that is creating new techniques, new technology, uh, breaking, making history in the process of it. If you used to ask any of them, if it hurt when something failed, they would tell you, yes, but we got to keep on. And that's why God kept on working. He worked and he worked and he worked with the Hebrew people. And he took people in that weren't Hebrews and accepted them. I mean, you can look at uh, Ruth, you can look at uh, 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 Rahab, uh, and I mean, uh, but she, well, you know, Tamar, they was several of them that by, by standards, Christian standards, would not have been acceptable in that time. Yet God brought them in anyway. Ruth was a Moabitess. She wasn't a Hebrew. And yet he used her as the heritage for Jesus Christ. And just same with Rahab. She was a harlot, run prostitute ring. And yet God used her 
she wasn't a Hebrew at the time, but she believed in God more so than probably a lot of the Hebrews did. We have, and, and through that, when you have walked and have fellowship and relationship with Jesus, then you have the ability to go to the throne room of God. Look right here in verse 12. In whom? In whom? Who, who's the in whom? In whom is in Christ Jesus, we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. In other words, in Christ Jesus, we have boldness and confidence. We have that access. Let me read you verse, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When we understand that, and let me tell you something, I have watched a lot of people go through a lot of different ordeals in their life, and more often than not, people, instead of running boldly to the throne of grace and obtaining mercy, will go in the opposite direction. Instead of going to God, they go away from God. And uh, we have to learn. If I mess up, no, don't run from God, run to God. If I need help, run to God, not away from God. And have confidence and boldness is only when you know and are sure of who you are in Christ Jesus. It's like if you know who your mom and daddy is, then nobody can persuade you different. And that's the same way when we know who our Savior is and our Lord and Father above. When we know, then we will have unwavering faith. We know that we have the boldness and the confidence that we can go to them, just like we could go to our earthly parents. You know, it, it's. I know that in this day and time, it's harder and harder to find uh Families that stay together, uh, it's getting rarer and rarer that uh, people will stay married for 40 or 50 years, but they should. And uh, because when they marry, they make a covenant with one another and with God. And with that said, you know, then understand have that boldness. Have that confidence. Uh, I don't want my kids or grandkids to be afraid to come to me and ask me a, a hard question or to be afraid to ask me of, of a need that they have or a want that they have or understanding that they uh, won't clear it up, clarified. I don't want them to come to me. And if they mess up, hey, I'll forgive them. That's the way that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is. And cause of his righteousness, we have that access and the ability to go to the throne of God and find that grace. Grace is God's presence, God's power, and God's provision, whatever you have need of. So, with that said, think, God, you've made me an overcomer. And you've helped me time and time again. He helps us when we don't even realize he's helping us. 
He's making a way where there seems to be no way. And if we fall down, guess what? He'll reach down. He'll pick us up. He'll clean us off. He'll forgive us. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Why? So we can be in right standing with God. So with those four verses that we read tonight, it's sort of, it overlaps with what we've been learning about the mystery of God being before heaven and earth was ever made, before mankind was. It gives us an understanding and uh, helping us to get in our minds that because of Jesus, we have access and boldness with God. So, praise God. Because we all need that. You know, it's sad when we fail to understand how much God loves us. You know, there forever so long, John uh, and James, uh, they, uh, the sons of thunder, so, so to speak of, uh, John, you want us to call fire down from heaven to burn them because they're not with us, they're not a, uh, following us? And Jesus said, no, but by the time it's all said and done, John was the beloved. John was the younger one of the whole group. John was the one that went around laying his head on Jesus' shoulder. Last Supper, you'll find John. You'll find John in first uh, 1, 2, and 3 of John. And they're based on the love of Jesus Christ, of God the Father, to us. So, that said, I'm going to stop right there. Tomorrow we'll go into part 12. And, uh, uh, you know, it's amazing to me how much food for thought is in a few verses at a time. And I hope that doesn't get you bored out. I hope that you stay interested in it. Do your research. Do your references in your Bible. And uh, and it'll take you all over the place because it's full of nuggets here and there. That's why I recommend always have a good study Bible. One that got has got plenty of references plenty of study notes and everything to help you be on a solid foundation so that when the enemy comes, like Isaiah said, when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard. In other words, the spirit of God inside of you will say, hold it, devil, you can't go no farther. And that's why we've got to learn to have that boldness, that confidence in the Spirit of God. When I'm weak, guess what? God's strong. Paul learned that. And we have to learn, too. Well, God bless. As always, if you strayed from God, if you've got cold on God, if you've backslid on God, or if you've never known the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Let's pray this simple prayer together. Father God, I come to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of all my sins. I ask, Lord, that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe that your word is true and that you are seat, sitting at the right hand of God the Father in heaven, making intercessions for me right now. And so, Lord, I want to live for you from this day on. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, just remember, God is in the changing business. 
and he will start working on the inside and it's going to show up on the outside. Tomorrow evening, join us again at 6.30 and also I'll go ahead and invite y'all to join us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock here at Mountain Harvest Church and uh, love to have you come and be part of the family and uh, we just uh, uh, country folks that just love the Lord and want to serve him the best that we can and so in between now tomorrow night and Sunday I hope that you just get hungry for God get in the Word of God build a relationship with the Lord and watch your life just explode into great dynamics for Jesus Christ. So God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow evening.